thank you, Arit. Thank you, everybody, for these extraordinary papers, um, or talks, maybe, rather than papers, we could call them. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to because we're running a little bit behind hand and um, you've listened a lot, I'm going to open it up pretty quickly um, to, to people here to add comments or thoughts um, uh, to what's been said or ask questions or, or um, uh, express disagreements. So while you're thinking about what, you, uh, what, what your disagreements and agreements are or whatever you're going to, whatever you would like to add, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to go back to something that um, Maria said at the very beginning of her talk or in her talk at the very beginning of, the, of today, which is she posed the question, how can we move from critique to proposal or proposition. And so, um, yeah, proposition. So, uh, so it, it, I think that what we've done as a panel is we've offered lots of critique of a current situation. But embedded within those, I think there have been propositions from the, maybe the pragmatic propositions for the transformation of an arts institution to the proposition of the transformation of the we and, and the many iterations between that. So I wonder, in, in the spirit of the, of, of the primary question that former West asks, which is that we think beyond the West and all of its economic and um, uh, philosophical and aesthetic paradigms that, that we have presented as problematics in various different forms, um, particularly on this panel through questions of race and inequality. How can we transform that critique into proposition? I think this is something that former West asks us to do, and that particularly, Irit, in your last, uh, in your last um, uh, uh, thinking through the we with Jean-Luc Nancy, you, you have begun, begun to, to move into that situation. How can we, how can we move from the we that um, delivers us to a we that we participate in the delivery of? I mean, if I can <laughs> simplify what you said in a certain way. So, so in that context, I'm first of all going to ask the panel if there's anything they want to add to not necessarily what I've just said, but anything they want to add to the, the discussions that they've heard, and then also open it up. We have two, we have one microphone. Swan's disappeared. We have one mic, I'm holding it and there's one there. We have two mics, do we have more than two? I thought we had more. On we'll use them now. So no, no, you take that one and, and start. We can, we can share this one, okay. I thought there were more mics than that. Okay, we have a mic, you have a mic. That's a kind of strange kind of um, measured weeness that's going on there, okay? So there's one between four here and one between millions. We are the 1%. Well, not quite, but anyway. Have you got any, anything that you'd like to add? Morgan, you've got... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's some uh, observations made during your talk that I didn't necessarily agree with, but I, I don't know what you just sort of... Well, well, maybe let me just say this short preamble before I do that. But you, the way you just um, introduce it then is that we should probably get away from uh, uh, anatomizing our differences and just focus on an overarching we that can help us be more productive and move towards some goal. So I don't necessarily want to bring up <laughs> uh, things that are going to um, mean... But in a way, I think it's important, actually, because one of the things that I feel like I've noticed recently is the emergence of a kind of um, fundamentalism, a fundament like a kind of fundamentalism of criticism um which which promotes a kind of sectarianism and i, and I i've been and what i think uh, well baldwin's sort of a, a romantic lyrical conception of blackness there was quite nice to listen to but i i also think that thinking is quite reductive and it's quite limiting and it's actually quite anach anachronistic but what it is i think a lot of people now are swallowing that as if it was a current way a, a decent a liberatory way of thinking about things um, but I think it leads you to quite a lot of psychological deadlocks and it leads to factionism and it leads to, to sort of separatism. Because the, que the idea of like a kind of white liberal um, participate in the black liberation movement is, that, is like, um, it's a non-starter really because at the time that question was being asked, and I just wrote a piece on this, but there were links between Northern Ireland and, and, black, and black power movements in America. Obviously that guy didn't know what he's talking about and obviously Baldwin, it, it, it didn't really favour Baldwin's conception of this innate lyrical blackness and a soul that he's explicating in all of his works, to, to admit that. So I just think it's important to acknowledge the failings of these thinkings when you're imparting them to younger generations because they're susceptible to those ideas and then they'll propagate them and act in ways that aren't necessarily productive. Now, I, I experienced that firsthand 
for, from three people who were involved in that, that project. The first one was when I was invited to give a talk to a, a, a group that was convened by a member of uh, that group. And my girlfriend was there, who was white. And before the talk began, he came up to my girlfriend and said, you do realize this is a talk for black and minority ethnic people. <laughs> And I thought, what the, what, how, you get, where does that come from? Se second, another person I was tutoring was one of the, the artists called Serena Mohammed. Um, we were talking about her work and she was saying, I'm stuck on identity, I can't get past it. And I was like, well, why, why? Why don't you just move beyond this limited scope that you're operating in? And an, another friend of hers who was actually from India, who'd been there, said, I think this is an issue to do with the fact that you've never been to India. Maybe if you, I, I don't know, so that's probably, that's a, a little less succinct than the example I used before. Uh, but then another example is that one of these younger people posted something on his Facebook page, and I mentioned this to you, Barbie, but one of the posts that he put down was uh, calling white people white bastards. Now, I, I, that's unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. There's no way that language can be allowed, even if you think that you're speaking from some sort of radical position of blackness where you're, where you're breaking down conceptions of... Um, uh, 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 white capitalist uh, uh, supremacy, pa patriarchal supremacy, or whatever bastardized terms people are using from bell hooks. So I think it's really important that like, um, well, it's great um, in one way to get behind these conceptions, these sort of lyrical um, ideas of blackness. It's important to, to, to um, deconstruct them and, and see where the failings are in those. And also there's a limited conception of what whiteness means. What is this, this idea of like a, the, the white liberals, sort of straight jacketed, a Protestant person sick, sitting somewhere doesn't have a conception of like music or feeling. It's not true. So, so sorry to sort of make you know uh, start off divergent things, but I just wanted to say that. But I think we need to ask <laughs> to respond. Yeah. And then we'll move on. Because I actually also think there is a this is a process. You know, I mean, you're talking about things of like you you I can uh, there's a point where you can identify yourself or you can position yourself. And, you know, we're talking about a kind of process and, and also a condition I, I think a lot of people are finding themselves in. Um, and also one of the, the uh, slides was the decolonizing education. So it was a really important point of being able to actually find material and, and to actually find material that represents you. I remember this being at college in the 90s. Um, and that's why Innova was so important to me, finding Innova, because it was this kind of, you know, I was, I was sitting in lectures or I was trying to present my work when people were saying things like, oh, you know, bring out your identity, you know, um, this is, uh, you, you're really good at this because you're, and, and it was just like, you're going, you're really good, I'm really good at, at like making patterns or kind of, uh, Sculpture. I wasn't interested in these things. These things exist. They are still there. They are, they've not gone away. And you know, there is. There are different people are, uh, are experiencing things in different ways. I also think that the idea of this, this idea of class, has to come into this because uh, particular people. You know, if you if you come from certain backgrounds and you're trying to and you're in a new background, because we've got to also understand that there are new people. <laughs> are constantly coming into this conversation. That's why I think that it's really interesting that Baldwin is in the West Indian Student, student Centre in the 60s. Because, you know, there, there, there's a, a conversation. I mean, we didn't see the whole film. There's a rigorous conversation happening there where people are trying to define. So there's a, a question where somebody says, why do you call yourself a Negro? Or not a Negro, or a black man. So it's, it's this constant conversation going. And I think going back to Stuart Hall is this kind of constant reiteration because it is different for them. And then they're also, and then also people are, uh, uh, I mean, the majority of the group are, are, are exploring queer identities. There is another layer to these kinds of identities. So there's this idea that we can kind of, I, f I feel, I'm feeling that we don't wipe these out. They're not, they're not necessarily gone. They are identities that people have to process for themselves. And if they process them through their practices or through their dialogues and you know a social media is not the best place to to be processing kind of language or whatever but it just makes me start to think about you know even things issues around this idea of free speech for example free speech for who who is allowed to speak what are you allowed to say what are you allowed to express in yourself and 
you know, when we're talking about these kinds of conditions that are happening more and more, this neoliberalist condition is actually saying, you know, it, it, it is, it's, it's expecting, and all these ideas of leadership and the ways that we conform, the meritocracy that you talk, is that we are going to, we have to kind of erase certain things of ourselves. I, li- I liked the idea that you were saying a lot of people say, I am not. So it's almost like I deny the not. Just because, just because somebody says, give me the mic, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no. Look, okay. You guys, you guys disagree with each other. Now we're going to open it up. <laughs> Who else disagrees with any of us? Because, because if you've got nothing to say, we're going to carry on with this. Okay? Yeah, carry on. Yeah, is that what you want? But then we suppose we might miss the kind of, the core of what you were trying to say in terms of Right. A question. Thank you. Uh, now, there's. Um, is it easier for me? Or? No, no, it's not. Hello? Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, maybe it's just about the twist, or maybe you even meant it like this because, uh, Irit, you were saying, you were ending with saying that. The, um, now she put the question before what laws do these identities stand and of course it's before you can also s- understand in a temporal s- not in a special but in a temporal thing and then you had the, have that problem what becomes before the law that says uh, I'm a woman, I'm black, I'm whatever so who is, who is constructing my identity even in a, in a probably Lacanian way so this before, um, then you get that problem of the essential. No? And, uh, so, so I was thinking, did you mean that also in that temporal sense, this before, or only th- in the special sense of before the law? And, and I think, yes, yes, definitely in the temporal sense. But the, the I mean, in a way to, to Kind of of back, you know, to back into into the discussion that was taking place here. I, we're not in an either or situation. I mean, we're we're not doing away with identity. We're asking, or I'm asking, the question of in what ways can we make identity an impossible category for being delivered. That that seems to me. To be to be a, a a sort of question, and I think that one of the ways is it's not the denial of all the components of identity; it's a recognition that one does not interface seamlessly with authority, any form of authority. For now, see, it's the law. I, I expand it to a much broader set of authorities. We don't interface seamlessly with authority at any one level of those components, right? So the, the sort of one, one of the things that seems so important about recognizing the internal contradictions of identity is precisely the, the, the degree to which it makes that impossible to then face the law is in, in any kind of coherent form. I mean, uh, all of this is in, in its I think against the background of two elements. It's the way in which within financialized late capitalist cultural institutions we're operating through a set of statistical factors. So that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect of it is that within parliamentary representative democracy, we are under the edict of recohering ourselves every time we attempt to take part in the process. So we may have fragmented ourselves into 58 facets of identity at the level of ethnicity, sexuality, class, regionality, language, etc. But when we take part in parliamentary representative democratic processes, we have to recohere ourselves. So we we are are sort of of operating under two very, very different edicts that demand our recohering ourselves. And I think the only way that we have 
that might prevent us from becoming a deliverable statistic is that kind of insistence on the, on the tensions between and the inability to take part in the process. And that means sort of, of put it, it's putting the process on show and not you know, the identities that are facing it. And I think that's what uh, Nancy sort of, of, of gets to in his notion of the we and his insistence that it's not the who that matters, it's what authority or what law they're facing. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Stefan Lundgren, and I have a question which is perhaps a bit broader, but also attaches to the overall theme. We can't hear you. And, uh, that is, um, why are we? Because this is also the, the question of what, what is this we, why are we struggling to construct a we, a reformulation of a we? Are we thinking that we are creating a new political subject by means of this we? And, and otherwise, why are we creating this we? I mean, this is just, I mean, this is not to be too provocative, but I think it's also important to address this question. What is this we and what is the actual target of these many different forms of we, we constructions that we are addressing? Uh, all right, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's a very question that I asked myself when I got the invitation, well, why? Why is this the conception? But anyway, the, the thing is, I think, um, where, where I want to sort of uh, um, slide into what uh, Irit was saying is on this idea of a parliamentary process and how we don't interface seamlessly with positions of authority and that they um, sort of, um, they conjure these identities when we butt up against them or we need, to, we need to come together to form a collective we in order to interface with them. Now, like, and again, that, that idea is about superordinate goals. And those are the things that, uh, for me, form we's. A, an example of which is the current uh, uh, political um, situation to do with housing in, the, in, the, in London particularly. Now, this has is, this is brought together loads of disparate groups. Uh, London Black Revolutionaries, uh, Focus E15 Mums. So all these people are working... Yeah, yeah. All, all, all these people are working to, together um, to um, achieve something uh, in the political process that comes up against juridical uh, uh, institutions, the police force, all those different things. So in some ways, for me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, community comes together. That is a useful conception of a we. I just have a problem when the, the, these other conceptions come into play, that the, the goal itself isn't necessarily clear. The we it's supposed to articulate isn't necessarily clear, but there seems to be a violence enacted on the subjects that are supposed to, supposed to conform to this we. And just to come back to this idea about not, yeah? <laughs> it, no, here's the thing, here's the thing, yeah? People always bring that up as if, like, when you're saying, oh, I'm a human being, oh, you're not a black man then. Oh, you're not working class. Oh, you're not this. But I'm trying to demonstrate that we're all of these things. We're all of these things. But in certain situations and contexts, one is at the forefront and one recedes. But at the bottom of all of this, the fundamental communality is that I'm human, you're human, you're human. So I, your issue's my issue. Your issue's it's just we, Charlie Hebdo, whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? But that's not what you were saying. Which so, what saying. No, no, I don't think that, that's not. Yeah, that's not what came through with what Baldwin was saying. Baldwin was saying that the, the black, that his uh, romantic conception of the black spirit is what is going to liberate the Protestant uh, um, sort of yeah, the but white. The whole yeah, but the, you yeah, cha you played that clip, so that's why we have to address it. Okay. So uh, that yeah, that's that's yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Good. yeah. Does, does that <laughs> does that answer your question adequately? Well, yeah, because it's, I think it's racist the question of the least. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that we. Of course, but I, I think that we are asking questions of, of a political subject or whether we can ask a question of a, the political subject or a set of political subjectivities and then how they act together. But I think that we have to remember that we're asking this question through art and what artists and curators and cultural workers do. And, and I guess the, the fundamental uh, 
task we've been given here today and tomorrow is to attempt to change the critique of that, which is, well, artists and curators are individuals, they don't work together, la, 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 the, their, their, their the cooperation is false or aestheticized, or we know all these things, Simon went through them today, into a proposition for a different way of working together, which might be institutional. It might be power institutional. And therefore, as, as, um, as Maria proposed at the beginning, we have these other models of, of collections of we, it might be people coming together around housing, or it might be people coming around uh, together around the attempt of a revolution. I mean, and, and these things are actually quite similar and are actually linked. So these are the complex questions I think that we have to answer. So the question is not what is the we, but is there a we, in a sense, for me? Yes. Richard. Uh, I, I wanna Could you say who you are? <laughs> uh, we know who you are. You, you did a talk. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Richard Noble. I, I spoke earlier uh, just to welcome everybody. But um, I wanted to ask uh, a little bit about this, um, uh, the, the use of the term meritocracy, which popped up a couple of times and seemed to relate to what Irit was saying about um, institutions delivering us as subjects rather than somehow liberating us to deliver ourselves. I, I, I'm curious as to know Richard, why. I, I the mic's not on or you're not speaking into it or something. It's on. Is that better? Okay, so I'm asking about the, the way you're using the term meritocracy. Um, I, I think of this term as, as referring to uh, uh, a kind of procedure through which uh, scarce goods are distributed amongst people. So in, in universities, one way in which jobs are distributed is through processes where people make judgments, colleagues make judgments about uh, people who are applying for jobs on the basis of what we consider to be their merit. It's never an absolutely transparent process, and it always entails some level of discrimination, but it's a discriminatory process. This occurs presumably in all kinds of institutions, including INOVA. Yeah. But you seem to be suggesting that in, in the process of, of being subject to a meritocratic framework, INOVA was somehow undermined. And more broadly speaking, that institutions, I guess, like Goldsmiths or others, are undermined. And I, I'd like to get a sense of why why you think that, because it seems counterintuitive to me. But um, okay, I'll start, and then maybe Iri can take over. Um, uh, for me, the process of meritocracy promotes, uh, first of all, hierarchical structures within institutions. So you, I, I, I completely agree with your description of meritocracy. I think this is the way people are processed, or pr processed themselves, actually, through uh, systems, and are encouraged to, be, to process themselves through systems. So we're all participating in meritocracy. You know, we, we're, all, we're all part of that. We're all part of that process, and we, we participate within it. The structure of our, our working lives is process through it. My invocation of meritocracy as part of the question of the we is that I see it as a, as a, as a block to one way of thinking through what the we might be. Meritocracy, mer can't even say it, meritocracy individualizes structures and processes. It puts us in competition with each other, which is, you know, we could say, we could formulate a we around a group of competitive individuals. That would be one way of developing the, the idea of of the we through meritocracy. In fact, one could say that the parliamentary form of the we, the people, is a meritocratic idea of um, the people and the we. Okay, you get spoken for by a particular person who has risen up through the ranks to be kind of straightforward about it. But I think we're trying to formulate different things and we're asking, asking whether the processes of making art, of artists, of image distribution, um, can be ways in which that difference can occur. So that's my response and I'm going to hand over to Irit now. I think, I think meritocracy operates precisely as a system of delivery because it is determined by a set of expectations of what it is to achieve and what it is to be able to function across a set of institutions as somebody with achievements. Whereas I, I think achievement comes through a series of struggles, not oppositions, but struggles. And I think that those struggles are enormously contradictory. A, a long time ago, I had a conversation with Stuart Hall 
and we were talking about what it was to come to Britain as a foreigner who had been accepted by some highly sort of elite education institution, him at Oxford and me at the Courtauld Institute, and how at the beginning of that process, we over-identified with the institution because we were so amazed that that institution would have had us. Uh, and later on, we overreacted against the institution because we understood our indoctrination and inscription into you know, its kind of dominant ideology. And I think that those are precisely the struggles of which achievement is made. It's precisely the recognition of how one is captured and wha how one emancipates oneself and one how, how one comes into critical consciousness. So meritocracy, especially through these excellence programs, produces deliverables of achievement that have absolutely nothing with the processes of struggle, which actually are, are, the produce, are what produces achievement. And so I think that the idea that we could actually um, arrive at a formula for meritocracy, you know, whose merits in the face of whose opposition, um, in, under what conditions, and the, the sort of, of one, one of the, the real worries about meritocracy and the discourse of meritocracy in, in, in sort of, of cultural institutions is the way in which it utterly elides and, and, and negates notions of disenchantment, of, of the fact that to be disenchanted with the, the values of what is considered to be of merit in a given society is actually to come into being. You know, so the sort of, Disenchantment, criticality, the, the, the things that actually produce consciousness are precisely what's being denied by meritocracy, which is a kind of bureaucratic deliverable. So I think that, that for me is, is the sort of, of if, if somebody said, okay, here's a program in which you can struggle for 10 years, produce endless amounts of contradictions, fight with everybody on the planet, uh, and in the end, you will be a subject of great consciousness. I'm signing up for as a mentor. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that, fair enough. And I'm, I'm, I know there are difficulties with a particularly kind of pure liberal notions of meritocracy, which represent themselves as having universalist criteria for determining achievement. But what are the alternatives that are meant to emerge out of this kind of reconceptualization of the we? I mean, is it nepotism? Is it some set of uh, ethnically based judgments about who's in and who's out? Is it uh, to do with, um, I don't know, uh, a kind of randomness? I mean, should we, for instance, introduce randomness into the way we judge student work in universities? I mean, you could argue that we wouldn't come that far from what we do now. But <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what I'm saying is that you, you, the, the notion of meritocracy itself doesn't necessarily <laughs> produce a sort of toxic identification with institutions. It's, it's important to recognize people's achievements. And also, there is a certain sense of, I think, uh, people want to belong to things. They want to feel that the we is substantive for them. Not that it pops up randomly through a whole range of casual interfaces as they go out throughout their day or whatever. I believe that people want to identify with institutions and with, with other kinds of groups for reasons that are specific to themselves. That may have to do with their ethnicity or to, with their sense of what they are as an artist or a curator or an academic. So it seems to me that you're in danger of throwing the baby out with the bathwater by blaming everything on meritocracy. We have to make judgments. There are, there are scarce goods in the world, and not everybody has access to them, and we have to make judgments. So if you have a, an alternative to meritocracy, that's great. But I didn't see one emerging, really. Well, I think that, um, well, 
Okay, that's great. Um, I, I mean, I think that the alternatives you proposed are worth considering, okay? What would it mean to think about randomness? What would it think about, you know, I mean, I, this, this, is the, this is the difficulty. This is the point that we need to think. This is what this conference is about. Y you've just made some propositions, yeah? So we need to think about those propositions. Irita's just made a proposition of a differently formulated organization or, or you know, kind of structure. And I think it's these propositions that are precisely what former West allows us to open up. Is that, also, yeah. Well, also, I mean, you know, the Has idea, I, sometimes it feels like when you, you have this conversations like this, you, you sort of start off concretely and you, you drift up further into abstraction. Yeah. And it's just like, you can talk about meritocracy, you can talk about, well, yeah, people want to belong to specific clubs, but I wonder how many people actually walk through life thinking this way, you know? I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. If some, sometimes we just wander into places where it's not particularly that useful, you know? Okay. So rather than sort of saying, oh, these things aren't in play and we should think of this framework and this is a position, actually, I mean, I, I live my life this way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disillusioned by it. That's just the operative mode that my consciousness, when I'm talking to people, that's just sort of what happens. So, I mean, I, I, I think this idea of the we, in some ways, is just a weird one, because, none, I don't know, yeah, you, yes, we're all collected together when we're in the queue for, like, chips or something, and that, we're, we're a group there, we're a we waiting for food, or we're a we somewhere, oh, this is a we now, yeah. but we're all radically different, we're all kind of alone, you know, that, that is a reality as well. Which is oh, I'm not saying it's a we, I'm just saying it's a reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, no, it's good. It's good, it's just that there's lots of people that want... Right, yeah. There are now, we're building up people, so... Um, when, what I could understand from what you guys were saying is this... Uh, and th what I've been thinking about with looking at Sara Ahmed's work is this, this kind of... A notion that you can create it you can create a kind of a, a kind of a way of looking at that but it still always puts you sort of outside so there isn't a kind of normalization of you being within yeah. this you know this kind of conversation so these ideas of these leadership programs for example i mean you know i've been through several of these arts council diversity initiatives that you 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 kind of end up back in the same place because you're still, you know these these conversations are kind of reiterated, and when I think about where Innova is at the moment, it's like we it's and this speech happening is this like this this is going to be another reiteration, or is it? And don't we have an opportunity here? And what is that opportunity? I don't disagree with, you know, with Morgan's position at all. What I would like to see is a space where all of these conversations can be had together. Sorry, I'm going to steal it off you. Sorry, Irit, we'll come back to you. But there are some people, thank you, there are some people who want to talk from the audience. So there's lots of, so there's one person up here. There's also Bonnie here, this gentleman here, people at the back. So I think actually now, why don't you talk to us? And um, unless it's a direct question, we'll take, we'll take them all in order. Uh, my name is Daniel Baker. And I suppose this is a kind of question. I was interested in what the panel thought of the concept of alliance in terms of uh, the idea of we. I mean, I think it came up um, a bit in what was going on at the end there between Morgan and Barbie. Um, clearly, in identity politics, issue-based alliances have formed uh, new kinds of we. So um, I suppose, is alliance something that we're looking at, or is that um, something that maybe moves away from the idea of a an essential kind of we, a kind of a, a contingent we. Okay. Thank you. We're going to take we're going to take that and then. So we have the question of alliance. So who's next? Who's next? Bonnie here. Thanks, um, Bonnie from the art department. Um, uh, so it's a proposition. Uh, it's it's a proposition. It's a proposition that. Um, I invented, and but actually began to realise others had also invented it. Um, and so there was a little wee formation um, that was very uh, ple pleasing. Uh, and uh, the proposition is uh, belief as a tool of survival. And it's to do with um, our sort of lost abilities uh, for um, 
the speculative principle, um, that which is to do with um, flexibility, which is to do with the mythic. Um, so Sun Ra, the Afrofuturist genius, um, uh, he described uh, that he said the black man is a myth, so I will be uh, a myth scientist. And he so he claimed that, and uh, he did uh, great, wonderful, poetical, magical things with that principle. Um, so um, my background is uncertain, also uh, racially. Um, um, uh, in dimensionally, dimensionally also is uncertain. Um, so um, to bring it back to this idea of a we, um, uh, it's mythical. We are mythical. We're mythical beings. Um, and so um, I think this is why uh, magical thinking has been pathologized. It's because it's powerful. And um, I'll end it there. We'll come back to the idea of uh, belief as a tool of survival. We have time. There's somebody <coughs> somewhere out here. It's just like, and then there's somebody right at the back. Well, uh, Hans Christ and I have to out me as a romantic German. So, um, so going back to, to the starting point also was when Simon spoke about this aspect saying that the Germans start uh, this moment of gathering in the context of, of the opening and the fall of the Berlin Wall. And maybe the massacre on the Tiananmen Square is much more important for what we're speaking about than the fall of the Berlin Wall. We never know. But they start to say, uh, we are the people. And the next was, in the process, uh, we are one folk. Uh, folk. No, folk. One people. One people, but at least it's where they have had this notion of the nation. They recreated themselves, the we, under the condition or in the framing framework of the law. And I think uh, in this moment, it was for me as a very romantic, I reacted very romantic, very sentimental on this moment, political moment, but then it was over. Then there was a need for a disagreement. And so the we is, and I absolutely would say that it's if we're thinking the institution nowadays along the possibilities uh, which the institution have in this framework, uh, they have to find ways to disagree with the conditions in which they're existing. Thank you. So disagreement. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. we might come to you if you want to. But, but right to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we take this yeah. one? Hello. Hi, um, my name is Victor Wang. And I wanted to, as much as I enjoyed the we versus the I, I was hoping to maybe step away from it for just a moment, away from this we-I dichotomy or this understanding of a institutional constructed we through the need of categorical representation, neoliberal models, and so on. Or as some other speakers pointed out, this internal diversity of an I, where, uh, where well, I'll leave it at that. But what I wanted to speak about was actually the, this idea of migration or this idea of generations, <coughs> the movements of people over time. This, and, and this thinking about when does one become local through many generations? When does one become of a certain space and then transition to another? Something that's quite, I think, important to speak about now within London. What is a Londoner? What is a person from South London, North London, or, in, or North America, for example? Yeah. You go. 
All right. Um, I'm Anne-Marie Twigg, and um, I'd actually like to go back again to the notion of I and we, um, especially because Morgan was going to say something about that, and I was interested in what he was going to say about that. Um, and I refer to um, Sherry Turkle writing a paper on the I and that we feel more lonely, lonelier um, in the social, that we can't really um, yeah, occupy ourselves anymore. And I was wondering, talking again, kind of like looking at this notion of the we, how does this lonelier and like function with like maybe a, a socialier? Like, could we just as well get lost in, in this notion of social, which is maybe not actually social, but in the eye and the lonely, which is lonelier or, anyways, so that was kind of my thought that I wanted to. Thank you. One more question here and then we'll have some very brief um, it's not really a question, it's a thought about a we. Um, back in 2007-2008 uh, when Anonymous Online were waking up to their kind of power, before they formulated the, you know, the famous kind of we are Anonymous, we are Legion, we do not forget, we do not forgive and all that, um, there were conversations articulating like why, why they like each other because they obviously hate each other. And um, I have this little image that I captured from the, the conversation, like image board, where they said, we are <laughs> united against a common enemy and that enemy is us. And the idea was that, I, I think the feeling was that anybody who cares enough to fight you, even if you really, really disagree, you're already engaged in some, you're part of a kind of a we that's very tenuous, very temporary, and <coughs> I don't know, but coming from where I come from, which is a conflict area, the idea that there, is a, there could be a we that happens because you, are, you, you care enough to fight with each other is somehow hopeful. <laughs> So maybe, maybe to produce a, a little bit of genealogy for this discussion, which, um, because it is in within the context of former West, and the point of former West, or at least as I have understood it as it unfolded over the years, has been to create a, a situation of mutual estrangement. Right, so that the, the, what is naturally associated with East and what is naturally associated with West and the relations between them go through a process of mutual estrangement. And I think it is the processes of estrangement that are so crucial to this discussion. I don't think it, it folds back into the I and the we. I don't think it's about individuality and, and collectivity. I think it is the processes by which any form of coming together produces an estrangement of the context in which they come together. And that is we, right? We is not allegiance and alliance and identification, but it is the possibility of coming together in order to estrange that in which we come together, which is how we face the law, etc. So th this is maybe just a bit of genealogy within the context of the, the project. Thank you. Morgan. Uh, yeah, if that's all right. Uh, yeah, so uh, going to try and be super quick. But um, yeah, about magic, totally agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need more magic. And like, there's an amazing quote by Alan Moore in the film The Mindscape of Alan Moore, where he talks about the idea that the, the grimoire is basically a grammar and that you know, writing is a form of incantation and satire is still like a spell. It's fantastic, definitely. Wish I'd have played that. But I just wanted to say it there. The other thing I wanted to say is like, 1989 always gets touted about this pivotal moment. Society changes, the Berlin Wall comes down. But it's also pivotal because Tim Berners-Lee submitted his idea for the World Wide Web at that year. And I, so with that in mind, I just wanted to talk about um, the question about the, the, the lonely and the social and the question of alliance and, the, and the, this idea of we's that sort of in play at the moment. Um, and also the idea of anonymous. And in some ways, like, 
like I don't think the idea that a, a we is something that it forms and then dis and then disintegrates is a, necessarily a bad thing. And in some ways, it might be to use like computational metaphor. Maybe it's a way of the network influencing the way we live because, it, of course, the internet is decentralized, and the idea about it is that there is not one central location, so you can't destroy it. So for me, there is something really interesting about we's being formed around specific issues that those members of the, that specific groups want to enact. So it, in a way, that the chip shop reference I was talking about, yeah, maybe they're not a we until the guy says you can't have chips. Then they say, hey, we want some chips. You know, that's the issue that unifies them. I know it's, it's a kind of base representation, but yeah. what, what I'm basically saying is the thing with Anonymous and the way and a, a, a to do with the housing crisis at the moment is that people are allowed to be themselves, to walk through the world, like, and not necessarily have to correspond to any essentialisms or, or any prescribed uh, identity markers, but then when a specific issue comes and they unify as a we who are there to uh, combat that specific situation. And for me, that's really powerful and really encouraging, and that's, that was, that's the sort of response to the sort of Sherry Turkle and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's take it back. Right. Um, uh, just, okay. yes, of course. Oh, I just, I thought, I think the migration thing and the idea of um, when do you become local um, and that sort of sense of belonging. And, you know, I can think about that from my own family and my own work process and some of the conversations that I've had. I've not only worked with young people, but I've worked with, with a lot of older people, my, migrants. And, and this, um, and I'm just about to sort of work with some young trafficked young people. And this idea of you know, place, which is quite important for people. Yes, we've got these these places, this kind of World Wide Web and all these kind of like this, and we're all supposed to be able to move around and do all of these kind of stuff. But actually, essentially, we live in our bodies and we want to be in, in place and we want to relate to our place and our, and the, 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 the people around there. So just thinking about going back to the idea of the institution and this kind of uh, placing yourself within the institution or wanting to I think that just kind of thinking back to to how you fit into a place and this idea of that you you almost try to reproduce the things of that place. So you uh, you know re reproducing institutions or reproducing the way that you are or kind of trying to to, to sort of fit in in some respects. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about how do we kind of uh, of how we can have this sort of dialogue where we, we put difference back on the table, I suppose, where we accept those and we, we don't try to kind of um, make everything the same. Yeah, great. Okay, so we, we end this session on uh, disagreement, whether it's romantic German disagreement or whether it's... Um, and of course, and this also brings us back to Simone's initial talk uh, where Rancière was brought up. You know, Rancière wrote a, a very important book, in my view, towards this idea of the we, the, the book Disagreement. Uh, so disagreement and difference are, are where we stop here for lunch. We need to be back for two o'clock in here, but thank you very much for participating in the first thing and thanks to the guests.